Werner, I was reading uh, an interview with uh, one of the directors from The Mandalorian. She was saying that you actually directed Baby Yoda at one point? Yes, I, I, since I was only, uh, only 20 inches away from it with my face, I could read what the, the, the response of the creature, which is of course all mechanical and artificial, but it was operated by human beings. And it was more that I directed or tried to, to, to tell the humans who couldn't see exactly what I saw. And I said, here the light, our torchlight is going right in its eyes. It should close its eyes. And of course, bang, they close the eyes. So uh, it's, um, it's not directing baby Yoda. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a professional, let's face it. Hello, I'm Brent Lyon. I'm executive editor of Film and Media at Variety, and we're here today at Variety's virtual studio at the Toronto International Film Festival, where I'm joined by the co-directors of Fireball, Clive Oppenheimer and Werner Herzog. So thank you both for joining us. To begin with, I wonder, Clive and Werner, what did co-directing mean? How did you all divide uh, the work on this film? When you do a film and uh, feature films are not any different. Very important is casting and uh, the cast of characters was all suggested by, by Clive. During shooting, of course, he has to be in front of the camera in that such cases I have to be behind when he's having conversations. He does not do interviews. He has to follow his sense of awe, his experience, his expertise, his curiosity. He talks to a scientist, a woman who um, speaks about, we are all made of stardust. And uh, everything in us is particles of stardust. And you see me somehow from behind the camera, softly pushing him to the side. And I said, once in this film, I had to interfere. No, I'm not made of stardust. I'm a Bavarian. <laughs> so of course there's humor in it and, and everybody understands it. This film has been described as a science documentary, and, and I often think of science documentaries as being a little didactic. This feels very meditative to me. There, there's a real sort of um, a philosophical um, aspect. Was that something you were trying to achieve? I don't like these didactic documentaries that you see on, on TV all the time. Just end it. End it all right there. And it's not only philosophical. We, we deal with wild characters. We deal with uh, tribal people who believe that they are riding their souls of the departed, riding on meteorites, on shooting stars into the netherworld. We speak to a Jesuit priest who goes wild over his fears uh, of a comet that he saw. Uh, there's humor in it. There's, you just name it. It's not only philosophical. You can't separate science from culture. And the motivation is that, that nature and culture are so entangled. These are rocks. It's a bit of geology, but these rocks have meaning. They have meaning for us. And they speak to our origins. They speak to our destiny. So I certainly wouldn't you know, contextualize it as, as a science documentary. Your film makes a very explicit connection between world religion and, and meteors. Why do you think there is that, that connection? We ask why in, in so many cultures and, and faiths through the ages have people considered heaven is up there, uh, the netherworld down there, and we're on the terrestrial plane. There isn't a clear answer, but you know it's true that in many languages the word for sky is the word for heaven. So when something out of that, that celestial order appears, a comet or a, a falling stone, uh, it, it has to have meaning. It, it, it can't be just disregarded as, a, as a, an insignificant fact or observation. I saw that in an interview you were saying that you really don't think people should start shooting uh, films until there is a vaccine for coronavirus. Is that correct? What, what is your feeling about resuming production on movies um, right now? You cannot venture out for a big feature film with two, a crew of 250 actors and, and uh, 400 extras in horses. You just don't do it at the moment. So you, you better wait for, good, for better times. But of course, you can shoot a film guerrilla style as I do it in 
Tokyo, I was filming with a minimum crew and only the actors and nothing else. Do it prudently. We have to be disciplined. That's all there is. What about going back to cinemas? Because cinemas have started to reopen. Do you feel comfortable going back to movies? Do you think people should uh, be going to theaters? Movie theaters has always been the mother of all battles. That's what I want to reach. But of course, now we are shifting more and more into streaming. This shift has taken place way be before we had the pandemic. So we have to learn how to do it best and invite, for example, friends to your home, give them a good beer, <laughs> prepare a good steak, and then on a very big screen on your wall, uh, project a movie with your best, finest sound system. We should avoid viewing films on our little cell phones. And I've heard from somebody, young kids uh, watch a movie even one and a half time the speed. That's stunning for me and I have to think about it. What, what is going on there and what is their feel, feeling of timing? What is their attention span? What is storytelling? Uh, how Does it change the way you want to approach stories when you hear something? No, of course not, because I'm a storyteller like tens of thousands of years ago, since time immemorial when human beings started to speak and gather around a, a campfire, they would tell stories. And storytelling will not vanish and it will not fundamentally change. So what if some people watch a story uh, one and a half time the speed? What's going to stay is the movie set we make. Um, this film uh, documentary has a clip, and, and I believe it's from Deep Impact, unless my knowledge of 90s action movies yeah. is faulty. I was a little surprised to think of you as watching that film, and then you praise how realistic it is. Are you a fan of, of Deep Impact? I never saw the entire film, but I knew that there was a meteorite uh, impact in the movie and I found it very well crafted, really convincing, well crafted, good storytelling, good movie making. That's Did you have to see the whole thing or just the just that section? Only that section. And you're but not interested film, in watching the rest of the movie? No, I don't need to see it, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs>